Hello, Angela. How Hello. are you? I'm good. I'm so glad you're here to, to make the time out of your busy professional schedule to come up and do a little sewing. And I'm glad you've taken on the um, doing the new pink pearl fishers. I know you've done this though for commission work, haven't yeah. you? Yeah. So this is not going to be, there's going to be no mystery to you. No, no. For doing this. Yep. Okay. So, um, you have come up with something that I didn't know, so I guess I guess I'm going to let you start. Okay. Well, I, but uh, but you're not going to get away with not telling that little secret that you have. <laughs> so uh, when you get your packet, you're of course going to get your instructions, and this is the first version of the pearl fishers, and now you're going to get it in pink and um, this really lovely light. Ecru. Ecru color. It's really pretty. We'll, we'll discuss that in a little bit. But um, again, when you are going through your instructions, please use the layout. Pattern layout. Yeah, because this is chiffon. And if you don't use this trick that I'm going to, you know, show you how to um, deal with chiffon, it'll make it really hard if you are not careful with your placement. You're going to cry, too. Yeah, you you will cry. You don't pay attention. <laughs> and and the way chiffon tends to move, you may end up getting on a bias instead of a straight line. And all of this really matters when you're... When you're working with yeah. us to get the, the drape. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you will get all your... And pieces. you have such a great idea. And, and you know, we here just have suffered. <laughs> have suffered with chiffon. So but, but it's essential to this era of clothing. In the 80s, my mother and my grandmother worked together as seamstresses for a boutique. And, when they, and they worked with chiffon practically exclusively. They, when I was little, they had huge bolts of it all around. And what they would use, would, they, would, they would have paper and they would have these really heavy weights to make sure that the chiffon did not move. So most of the time, when you're cutting, you have a piece of paper. You, you have this, you have your um, pattern pinned to it, and then you would cut it. And that would just be able to kind of give the chiffon a little bit more body. Now this is my secret because this will help a lot. It will and they were, this, doing large, they were doing large lifetime gar life size garments yes, where were, weights would, would work. Yes. We're not doing that. No, we're not. That would move and, and again, you will cry. Yeah. So. This is freezer paper. This is Reynolds freezer paper. You can get it at the grocery store. You could get it at the grocery store. You could get it at Walmart. You get a really big amount so it will last you. Most of the time when people use this freezer paper, it's to put it in the their printer. So like their inkjet or... or now why would they put it in their inkjet? Because they can print out um, a pattern on there or you oh. know, like a little picture. And okay. it's usually quilters that, that use it this way. Okay. But that you, makes sense. Yeah. So So if you were gonna wanted to put a sutash on to something, you would you would use this a sutash mm -hmm. design? Yeah. So, it, so you can see this has this dull side and it has the shiny side. The shiny side Can you hold that up to the light yeah. so it gets yeah, okay. so that the okay, yeah, we can see that shine. Mm -hmm. So I gotta heat up this. Um, this is a little bit wrinkly because I brought it all the way up from me. Well, we could have gone to the Grove Market across the street and gotten you some. I know, but I wanted to share this. So what you do is you're going to take your bit of chiffon. You can spray it first, make sure all the wrinkles are out before you apply it. And then you just place it on here. Then you're going to iron it. So it, when you iron it, you're not ironing it when it's damp. You're dry, no. You're drying it when it's, it's dry. dry. Okay. It has to be dry. Okay. And when you iron it, make sure you know it's in the place that you want it. What I will do um, is I will take pins. Oh, I have some here. I'll take pins to kind of keep the paper down and to... And they can do their yeah. whole... Um, yes. Their do whole... Before they cut it out, they can do this. Yes. This whole bit. The whole sheet. I'm only showing you a little piece because that's right. all I have left. Right. And then I'll show you after how, how this looks. So again, you could put your whole sheet on there. 
you see how it's it's nice and taut mm -hmm. and then if this is not fully hot yet but oh here we go all you do is iron it that's it and that's it oh, that's you such see a, that? that's such a great um i'm gonna have to tell the, the the department upstairs about this little trick because they they just do it au naturel and that is just now, I, the one thing we never talk about in, in, I don't think any of our instructors have ever talked about, which is really, really important in dressmaking, is the grain of the fabric. Yes. Absolutely. So whatever you're doing, it make sure it's the grain you, you, you want it all going in the right direction. And the nice thing about chiffon is you can see the grain very clearly. clearly. Right. So when you put this on here, you can see it's it's going the right direction, where you know where you want it. It's not going to be on the bias. It's, it's, unless you want it. Unless you want it on the bias. Mm -hmm. So the next thing to do, you can cut this with scissors. Once you cut, start cutting with scissors, it will start to lift a little bit. The best way to do that, if it's on a, a very straight line, is to just use your rotary cutter, and it will be perfectly um, okay. just. Fabulous. Well, yeah. show them the pieces okay. that you've already cut out of the chiffon because so, so it's pretty impressive as far as the the precision of it. So this. I mean, that is just that's just perfect to. I mean, I'm familiar with this pattern piece, so that is really is, yep. really sure. good. That's sharp. It's very sharp. You see that it matches perfectly because. Oh yeah. I that's cut great. It. The other thing is. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. you so could, you, you could draw out your pattern you pieces like first. Draw it on the back. Make sure your placement's correct, and then you can cut on the line. Oh, that's that's worth the price of admission, right there. So do not be afraid of chiffon. No. It's not scary. There, Michael and David go again making a chiffon dress. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well that was a great tip. Okay. So I've already cut out my chiffon pieces and I'm gonna do the brocade skirt. And again, I kinda wanna give you another little tip about the brocade skirt pattern. When you get your pattern, it's gonna look like this. Fold it in half and then find where you would like to have the placement at. Do you want to have a, you know, the pearls going one way, or do you want it to be there a gap like here? You know, you want the pearls to be it that can be way. However they want. However you want. But, you know, again, if you fold it in half, it'll make it so much easier to then line it up the way that you want it. Yes. And I, I do appreciate how you've, I can see how you've done your, your hemline so that you're gonna you're gonna do really what we did with the sample, which is the little pearl is gonna drop right down mm -hmm. there into the center front. Right, right. But I mean, there's no wrong way. There's to do no that. wrong way. It's yeah. just the way that you want it to be. Mm -hmm. But you know, again, you want it to kind of be a little bit more straight, and and you don't want to end up with okay, you know, if you wanted things to be kind of on the line, you don't want it to be off kilter just by a little bit. And it, ma it makes a difference it when does. it's attached mm -hmm. to the bodice, that it that it has some kind of um, symmetrical look to me. That would matter to me. I wouldn't want my 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 points uh, to be off kilter. Okay. So that's a good job. So I'm going to cut the rest of these and... We'll be back. So I'm going through and doing my placement on the brocade. And usually what I end up doing is because sometimes if I pin things to the, the pattern to the fabric, I, I get shifting and I don't like that and at all. And you also get holes in the and silk. You get holes too, yeah. So, and what I end up doing is sometimes I just stab it because you can just get one pin prick. You don't have two or yeah. don't accidentally pull threads out. Mm -hmm. And then I'll take the fricks on ten. And with the, the, the mat, you can mm -hmm. use it as a, you know, almost like a, um, 
um, it's like pinning a butterfly down, really. Yeah. So you're using the Frixon pen, mm -hmm. which when you iron it, that those lines will go away, correct? Yep, you just cut it, and then once you, and you can even, you know, first it. And you can it. cut on the line, so cut you don't even line. have to. Yep, it's all good. I'm gonna just steal a pen here, and then you could see, just, you don't have to worry about too much shifting. When you're using, when you're sewing with the larger garments, most of the time, you, you know, it's okay to, to pin it or you use weights. That's a, how my mom did it and my grandmother. But these are tiny, tiny pieces. And especially for her, they're very tiny. So this is I'm surprised your, your, your mom and your grandmother didn't work in the, in the studios, in the dressmaking departments. Or was that kind of over by then? No, they, they, not for my grandmother. She did do seamstress work in Juarez, probably in the 40s or so. Okay. But um, in the Cause, 80s, cause they, they were. Because they had movies, uh, yeah, in, in uh, Mexican cin cinema. Mm -hmm. So that was a big deal. No, but they, they just worked for um, a boutique. Okay. Yeah. But in the time when people wore gorgeous clothes. Yes. That was, that was after. <laughs> well, you have been trained very well. One of our uh, regular attendees was here this weekend for a club meeting and said, I love Angela's tips. <laughs> <laughs> and I do too. I'm always trying to figure out a way to do things a little bit easier because sometimes that can be lazy. Well, no, I mean, it's... Listen, I mean, you know, Michelangelo mm -hmm. used the best tools that were available at the time. Now, we did talk about this, and Angela asked me, do you really do the dart in the front? I do, yeah. And you really do do, you absolutely should do the dart. When you do it, you will, it will ultimately go into the seam and you think it doesn't make a difference, but it does. It just gives it that just tiny bit of um, fit over the front. So do put that in. Yeah, I did it the, on my commission pieces, but um, I was curious. Oh, it makes that, a difference yeah. because we did it both ways and, and I realized it just needed that one tiny, mm -hmm. even if it's just a couple of millimeters to, to keep her to keep the girls in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you're sewing that, you know, just kind of bear in mind where it is and how uh, how you sew it. So that way it kind of matches when you're putting the pieces Yeah, oh, it together. has to and, match. And we'll get to that part later, but I'm okay. just kind of warning uh, you guys. So we're going to, we're cutting out the, the striped silk. We've cut out the chiffon. We've cut out the brocade. And the next we'll do the, um, the inner pieces. And we'll be back. So I'm going to show on a, some samples so you could kind of see the contrast between and how you need to actually construct this. This is for the bodice. This is for the bodice. The long curve is going to go here on the bust line. This is your bust line here. And, you, and it, we're just doing this for contrast. Yeah. These do not go together like this in real life right and then you're going to sew about oh, around you know a little less than a fourth of an inch around between an eighth and a fourth depending on how your doll is remember you're going to have to fit this on your doll and once you finish this side it's going to be the same on the opposite Once this is complete, you see these end pieces, these shorter pieces, you then will go and match these together and sew those so that they will match. This is going to be your back piece that will fold over and you will put your hooks and eyes on this. This is your back closure. So you'll have sufficient You've gear. got plenty. You have mm -hmm. plenty. But this right here, your seam allowance here is going to be about a fourth of an inch. So, you know, make sure you read your instructions to kind of go over that. 
So once all of that is sewn, you're going to hand, end up having two brocade pieces like this. Remember to press afterwards and don't forget to sew in here the little notch. Same thing with your tarlatan. And then once you do that, this is the way it's going to kind of, not the way you assemble it, but this is just roughly how it goes. So you're gonna have this piece. That's your lining. Lining. So the this, other way. Yes, yeah, so this is gonna be facing her and then your tarlatan, oops, she's getting snagged on. Your tarlatan is then going to go over that and then the outer piece will be here. But the way to assemble it is you're going to have right sides together. This is very important because yep. it makes it so much easier. You're going to have right sides together and then you put your tarlatan over and then you sew it. Make sure your notches and your seam allowances here, they all match. Once it's sewn, then you can flip it over and then it'll appear just like how I just showed you earlier. Which the, the tarlatan okay. will be in the center. In the center, it'll be sandwiched. Between in. the two finished edges or pieces. Mm -hmm. and that's it. And then we'll go ahead and sew. Now, what, when we did this, I mean, it, people can do it how they like. We did this, we, we um, made our fit, we went all the way around and sewed across. Right. Yes. So this is a time where they can do that, where they don't have fold overs. Mm -hmm. But you have to kind of figure out, we've given you enough to wiggle for your fit. So they do have to figure that they out. Do they do have to figure it out. Yeah. Again, just try it on your doll, see how it goes. Because they are all, all handmade, they can be just slightly different. But and it there's plenty of... It depends on the fit that you want, too. Sure. Yeah. Sure. All right. Well, we'll sew these together and we'll get come back for the next step. Hello. We've returned. We finished the bodice. Uh, as you can see, it's nice and taut. And we went back here to make sure... You, what you do is you stop at a certain point and then you fold in the ends and then you kind of sew that. So you did kind of a whip stitch it, closed? Yeah, closed it. And then you, you know, you want to kind of fit it on the doll to make sure that you have enough for your hooks and your eye just to fit it in the back. Okay. So once you're done with this, the next piece is the front pearl piece. So I've already kind of pressed it an eighth of an inch down and you're going to want to press it a little bit again on the sides. And I use the spudger so I didn't burn myself because once you, you know, you can finger press to a certain point but at the ends you're, you're just going to yeah. burn yourself if you yeah, try to. If you to. don't have a spudger, it, we have those in, in our boutique. You can, and they're not expensive. No. And then after that, then you can sew down the that. So what we're going to do is we're going to press. Can you hold the sides. that up? Yes. Um, uh, to, no, I mean her, oh, the, her, and her, her. Yeah. So you've you've they're going to have plenty of uh, material mm -hmm. to figure out what design they want to do. Yep. And I, I do like the design. That's what we did. But they could do it something different if they want to. Right. And uh, you know, once you've finished doing that, you're going to have pearls that you can then accentuate however you want on the bodice as well. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Harvest later, those we're, pearls. Going to, we're going to put those pearls around here, but we know, do that yeah, later. That's much later. The embellishment comes after we've completed all of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and press these sides and then we will tack this on to the bodice. Okay. We will do that and then we will come back and show you the next mm -hmm. step. Okay, now I have tacked down the pearl bodice part. Um, what you're going to want to do is take a little bit in the middle, and then I just kind of took a little bit in the, over here. Kind of make a little poof. Yeah. I mean, we didn't it's, have that in the directions, but I no, think that does it, help. It's just you know, however you want to you know do it. it. It's up to taste. You know, it's it's going to be beautiful no matter what. 
And then after this, we're gonna do the sleeves that drape over the shoulders. And then um, what we're gonna do here, which I've already did most of it, but in the directions, it's folded over one eighth and, and then, then one eighth. A, another eighth. So if you're going to do it this way, the, the way um, I suggest is to get maybe an 80 weight piece of thread because it'll make it easier, is to just kind of finger press the eighth, go with the um, 80 weight thread and tack it down with just a running stitch. And you can make big running stitches because you just want to tack it down on there to then when make it easier so when you fold it again you could then iron it down and it should stay and then you can go ahead and make your permanent running stitches and then pull the other running the the other basting stitch right out and that will make it easier you won't have to kind of struggle making it a nice straight clean edge what i'm doing here is i'm doing a rolled hem just to kind of demonstrate how to do that if you wanted to go that way. Because here is a finished roll. It's pen. very pretty. And it's very and it's very small. I know a lot of people have issues with doing it and there's tricks on how to do a rolled hem. Uh, one of my tips is if you have the downy wrinkle release spray some on your non-dominant hand, not your sewing hand, the one that you're gonna roll with, and that has a bit of a stickiness to it, but it's also wet. Trying to roll, do a roll hem on a dry piece of fabric is a little bit harder because you're waiting a while until it finally rolls on itself. But with, by doing that, I, I, don't, I didn't have any downy, but I'm just kind of showing you, you know, once you do it with that, it'll make it much easier to do a much finer, smaller rolled hem. So what you do, and this is how I do it, is I will drape it over my index finger, and then I will do like a blind stitch. So take a little bit, and then put it through the roll. And once you do that, it'll you'll get tiny, even stitches that way. Okay, that that's a nice little technique. Yep. So it looks like you just roll a little bit at a time. You just I just roll a little bit at a time, and I can hold it here to make sure that it's it's like that. And then, like I said, just just roll it, drape it over. So that way you're not kind of sewing on yourself or losing it um, and you'll not get nice, tight, small rolled hems. And what, another thing is when you roll it, roll it until you get to that point where you had left off and then that is a way to make sure that you're not taking too, or you're not rolling too far down it'll make sure that you're you're pretty much even. So you do it like that. Roll again and then back to where this is at the bottom. Grab a little. And that's it. Nice and small. It's very easy to just keep rolling and then you'll you'll be lopsided if you're not careful. But that's kind of how I do it. And if you find that, especially with long pieces like this, you will you'll get a kink or it'll get too curly. The way to do that because I tend to take really long you do. strips. Yeah, of, and, and I, I use short. Yeah, and a lot of people do it because it gets curly. So in order to um, minimize that, you just take your two finger your fingernail and your finger, and you do this, and we'll straighten it right out, and you don't have to worry okay. about it kinking up again. So once this is done, I'll move this to the side and I'll finish that later. 
you'll have your finished piece and you're going to want to leave the edges raw because then you could do a running stitch here and then we will place it here and tack that on again fit it on your doll we'll come back to it after I finish doing the running stitch and then drape it so then you can see how then you're going to sew it here and let it go onto the other side and then do this same thing. Okay. So we will, we will finish this and we will come back and show you the placement. So now that I finished gathering the very bottom, you could see I've it's a little bit more, it's probably between a fourth of an inch that I went from the bottom. It's raw still, but it's gathered. I haven't um, t uh, t uh, tacked it into place yet, but what I'm showing you here with the pin is the placement of where you would want to tack that in. Right here, you want to cover a little bit of the yellow part of the bodice and you will then tack it here at the corner, right, um, again, covering the top. At, at the top, right here, at the very top of the bodice. So you're going to pull rather tightly because at this point, you're going to gather again here at the back. But again, I'm pinning in the area where you're going to be tacking it around. So it's going to, again, be gathered like you did here in the front, in the back here, and then you will tack it first. And that's what's going to hold the, the top on. And, it's, and then you'll have your sleeve here. After you've completed this, we're then going to do a running stitch here to create the little poofing on the sleeve. And then we will continue on after that. All right. So we will, we will sew this up and we will back to show you the next step. Okay, so I've already tacked on. Hold the it sleeves. up! Hold it up! Let me there hold you go. Up. Okay, that's looking really good. And you can see that the back sides are even as well. That they're Perfect. Kind of lined up. If you notice, it's a little puckered here, but you know, that's you know you can. If you notice that it's not as taut, you can either just kind of tack it down a little bit more. Or, you know, we're going to be putting more pearls on. So, yeah, so, we so don't need to. Matter. It's a waste of time to. Um, you may want to go and overcast this raw edge just to kind of keep it from fraying. Uh, I'll probably do this off camera. Off camera. Mm -hmm. So you won't see that. Um, hopefully you guys know how to overcast. Because when we put the skirt, we're going to do it, sew it this way and then flip it over. Okay. <laughs> so then you won't be able to see this. This is not important. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to gather the sleeves and we are going to gather from here to about one inch um, and thus we'll pull up the sleeve. And that's going to create a lovely it's drape. It's going to be very pretty and then later on when we're, when we're doing the embellishments you'll have pearls coming down here. Um, Angela, I think I would... I would Put find the, the center. Oh yes, and absolutely. Then, and then of the sleeve, and then I would measure from an inch from mm -hmm. the, um, the hem of yep. the sleeve, and then start start there. So rather than the my, other way. Yeah. Oh no no, that's what I was saying. From, oh, okay. from here. Okay. Right. You're gonna go and stop at where the, you'd be at an inch. inch. Yeah. yeah. So if I have my ruler here, uh, a good way to find your center is. The center of the yeah right here so that is your center you're gonna have an inch and it will be right here you can pin it to kind of help you stop it and I will I'm gonna eyeball it for the moment and I would also use a double thread wouldn't you I yes I would absolutely recommend doing double thread so here is our inch in the middle, right here. Okay, so I have my thread and since I have it pinned, 
I can start. You know exactly where you need to go. I can go and um, I will. And this is really, you know, when these dresses for people were originally made, they had to stand there and have all this fitting done to them. Mm -hmm. You could do this off the doll, but I, I want to show it to you. She's got to have her fitting. She's got to mm -hmm. work. And then you and so you're doing nice, up. nice tiny stitches. Yes. Always try to do it by scale, and a good way to do it by scale is looking at the finger of the doll. Yeah, that really is an excellent idea to. Is that an inch? I that was an inch. Maybe I need to go a little bit more. I think you go about an inch and a quarter. Probably. I mean, there really is no wrong way no. to do this era. It's all artistic. There you go. That looks really good. And then I will go ahead and do it on the other side. And then we're going to go come back to. We set this aside for now, right? Right. We're going to start working on the skirt. Okay. Well, we'll be back. Okay. Now that we have finished with our bodice. The next thing that we are going to be doing is the skirt and we need to bind the skirt with the silk ribbon that you have. So what I would recommend is to spray it um, and then iron it out so it's nice. If you spray it, it's going to make it easier. It's not going to tear up as much because silk is a little delicate. That's very delicate ribbon. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. So you're going to then fold it in half and sew it. So you're just going to go on the edge. So it's going to be like a quarter and another quarter when you bind it. So just do a running stitch along here. And then you're going to fold it over and do another running stitch. We're going to do it here, here, and also on the bottom. So we're going to do both the sides first, then we'll do the bottom. Now, if you notice, that you have maybe some loose pearls, go ahead and like maybe fix that before you start doing the silk uh, binding first. Um, if you lose one of the the pearls, you can harvest it from the scraps, the scraps mm -hmm. that you have um, from either here or from your skirt. So I mean, they're pretty them. well on, but they it, are. But this is vintage fabric, so it it it, it can just handling that, that they can come loose. Yeah, by, by moving it and touching it too much. It, it'll and, and really with the, the worldwide pearl shortage, you got to tack those down. Mm -hmm. You don't want to lose one. No. All right, so shall we sew this yep. on and then we'll come back and show them how we've done it and we'll move on to the next step. Yes. Okay, so I've already done the sides. You can see. It looks really Folded nice, Angela. You did a beautiful job. And when I got to, if I saw that there was a, a pearl here, I just kind of pushed it a little to the side because once we close this up, and it's going to be hem. like, yeah, that's the hem. So you're going to go over and sew there, but you're going to, of course, leave your. Um, I forget, but it's three inches or so, probably. Three inches. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's three inches. So you're That's your back opening. Up, yep, to your back opening. But right now, this is your hem here. And because this is the way I did mine, where I wanted to make sure that the pearls were showing. Yes, and I like that. I'm going, and so only, don't fold this over. Just leave, just sew one side at this point, because once you fold it over like this, that is how you're going to do your hem because then you can go over. We're going to stitch here first. After you've done with this, measure it on your doll, 
with the bodice to kind of place where you want your hem to be. It's roughly going to be around eight inches. So but they really should fit it. You have to fit it first. With the shoes on. Do with, we have shoes we here somewhere? We do have shoes. Oh, you want to show them the shoes? We should absolutely show the shoes. They're beautiful. And the, um, they are made in house. These are these are Maison. They are from the house, and these are tiny. These are not much bigger than Barbie's no, shoes. No, they. So she should be wearing these when we should, fit. Yeah, when we are done for this, uh, we'll, we'll put these on and. And I will tell you that they the shoes are balanced, so that if the doll is balanced perfectly, she can stand. Mm -hmm. I don't recommend that yeah, to they, use her without a stand, but you, it, it does work. <laughs> you don't want an yeah. accident, yeah. especially here in California. One no. little rumble and it's yeah. going to fall over. Yeah, but it, she will stand. Yeah, but these, you, again, you want to put the shoes on. We'll, we'll do that. We'll, we'll measure it. We'll show you after we've finished placing it and then kind of going over um, and sewing the closure so then we can kind of explain the placement. Okay, well, we're, we're going to sew this up and we will be right back. Okay, so here is the hem. And now that that is... Can I see the other side? Oh, it looks yeah. beautiful. Angela, you did a great job. Then after that, you're going to do right sides together and you're going to sew again right on that edge which to should make be sure a quarter of an inch quarter of an inch you want to make sure that the silk here isn't going to be showing when you do it turn it inside out but again you know measure three inches from the top and stop sewing. and then stop sewing right here and that will be it and that is a an elegant finished e hem or um, seam it will be really beautiful. And then after that, then you can measure, you know. How, and we'll work how, on the placement. And we'll work on the placement. We'll put it on the doll so then you can see it. And then after that is complete, then we can sew. Um, and then we've got a big step done. Yes. Oh, and then we have to do the back, the, the really pretty part. Okay, well, we'll, 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 get, get, we'll, get, to we'll get, get to that and then we'll do the pretty part. <laughs> I'm ready. All right. <laughs> okay, we'll be right back. Okay, so I've already sewn along the line and what you need to do is you need to press it out because then that will, you won't have this bulk to deal with at the end. So I have my, pre this is my pressing ham you can buy pressing hams at the boutique. And again, I absolutely recommend pressing hams because then you get It just get makes a, a better, round makes, item like this so much yeah. easier. You just stick it in. You don't, I mean, you can try to have one of those little... Um, Arms. Yeah, but it just makes it so much easier. Well, I mean, we have ham. both, but the hams yeah. are very convenient. For something this small. Yeah. Yeah. So, pressing here. Even though this part isn't sewn, I am going to press it down so that. Yes, I think it that's lies, an excellent idea. Lights flat. And. It just makes a nice continuation. Mm -hmm. And then you can pin it to your ham. And you can spray it, which I'm going to do now. Because you want this to lay flat. looks really, really elegant, the inners. Oh yeah, it, it, it's nice when things have a nice finished look. It's like couture with mm -hmm. the bound 
seams. It's going to make life so much easier when you put it on the doll. So let's just kind of see what it looks like right now. We are here working on a work day, so if you hear squeaking, grinding, bulldog sounds, sewing machines, sewing machines, I'm just going to show you how much nicer that looks when you've pressed it. Oh yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. Completely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it looks like we've got quite a bit to work with there. At the, oh yeah. So we can really, and shouldn't we try on her, put her shoes on her at this point? Oh yeah, let's do that. Her beautiful shoes. And these kits do come with the shoes and the stockings and the underwear pattern and kit. Well, that sounded like a monster in the background. <laughs> I think that's the perfect placement right there. Yeah, mm -hmm. you do want to have it right there. And if we were to, if we kind of Yeah, we've got quite like a bit that. to work with to, yeah, we're to, good. to trim off the top. So we'll get this we'll get this next stage done and we will be back to show you how we're gonna do it. Okay, so the next step that we're gonna do is we're gonna attach the skirt to the bodice. Now it's gonna be right sides together. You can see that this is the inside of the bodice. You're gonna wanna pull down the sleeves. And we don't want to catch it. We don't want to catch it. What I did was I matched the top parts, put it together, and made sure that this matched and this matched because the bodice part is probably not going to match this end part here. But you want to make sure that these are the same because when you do your closures, you don't want one being higher than the other. No. And then this will give you the correct. Um, make sure that you're not like short or all wonky when it comes to um, attaching it. Then what we're going to do is I'm still going to pin around here to make sure that I do not have um, them not catching any of the sleeves and then we'll go around. I pinched it um, the middle part to the middle of the bodice to get your center to get my center. So here's my middle part here. Here's my middle here. I'm going to pin that there. Then I'll pin to the sides and then I'm going to baste around it to then check before we before cut. Before we cut, before we sew. Basting it is just to make sure that the, fit's the perfect. fit is mm -hmm. perfect and it's the correct length that we want. Okay. And then I want to point out something in the back, mm -hmm. um, Angela, the skirt that our. Tr dot, um, can you turn it the other way? The. Um, um, the. The. the Right down in here. Oh. These are not going to match up here. No. It not won't. to worry about this because there's an overskirt that's going to cover this anyway. So you're not even going to see it. Yeah. So you unless don't you're it. looking up her dress. <laughs> <laughs> and she won't like that. Yeah. You don't. The only thing that you want to worry about is that 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 silk does not show through right. the lining silk that you have. And then if they did need, for some reason, there was some terrible loss of pearls, they mm -hmm. could. Oh yeah. You snag go a couple from the back. Because they're there. not going to show. No, it's not going to show. All right. Mm -hmm. So we're going to base this up and then we're going to sew it up and then we'll sh come back and show you the finished um, finished piece. I think is, then that's the next step would be the overskirt. Yeah, the pretty part. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll be back. Okay. okay. So I have basted it on and as you can see it. That's pretty great. Yeah. Perfect alignment. 
And then if you look in the back, it is going to line up perfectly here. If you lift up the hair a little Ooh. bit. Can you see yeah, that? Yeah, perfect. Mm -hmm. And even the, in the back. So this is a little, just a little loose because that's where I left off. So it's going to come out um, a little bit. Uh, what we next, the next step after that is we are going to sew it on because it's just basted. We're going to trim the bulk off and then we're going to overcast um, the bodice to the skirt and then we can move then on. we're going to move on to something mm -hmm. new yep okie dokie so that you, that worked out and your length looks perfect too so that that's really good and look at the length to the chiffon it's almost yeah. ideal all right thank you we'll, we'll come back and show you the next step okay now that i've gone ahead sewn everything on and took out the bulk and overcast it. It's looking pretty good. It looks very good. It's a, a, a column of skirt, which is what it's supposed to be. So that's wonderful. So the next step after this is doing the overskirt. Okay. So when you are sewing this, it is going to be right sides together. This lighter side is going to be in the in. We're going to turn it inside out, and this should be inside. Inside. So again, do not place it the other way around. And you, uh, uh, you beautifully sewed that by hand, but they could use a machine for this. Yes, Couldn't please they? use a machine. <laughs> okay. Why didn't you? Because I was actually sewing late at night. Oh, okay. Doing well, you this. could have sewed here late at night with a machine. Well, but, but yeah, but you know, doing it by hand, I did it um, the back stitching just to give it a little bit of strength. When you're when you're doing this, you know, you just look uh, at that. You did a great job. Thank you. I mean, that's really impressive. So now I'm gonna just finish this up, and then we will turn it inside out, and then we will press it. Okay. All right. So we'll we'll get this turned inside out, and we'll press it, and we will be back. Mm -hmm. Okay, now that everything is sewn around, we're going to turn it inside out. Be very careful because... It's chiffon. It's chiffon and, and it will fray and it's going to... You'll cry. <laughs> you will if you're cry. Not, you will cry if you're not careful. Just be very gentle with it. Use the, the main fabric to kind of like this. Finger press. Finger press. You you want to use that main fabric as as the strength because you don't want to pull on the chiffon. And then after you've done your little finger pressing, you can go and use your iron. You can then spray it. How nice it's turning. Because even though chiffon is delicate, it's also forgiving on these lines. It's not going to be a hard crease. There you go. That's looking very good. Nice. Do click iron. Beautiful. That lays very nicely. Then you can turn it over a little bit. I'm using our Mr. Bottle mm -hmm. for that. Which doesn't make dribbles. I think it's getting low. Yes, that's what it sounds like. Yeah, because you shouldn't have no. just one squirt and we'll do it. 
that's getting low of water. There you go. We've been working at this for a while. And this is more than one uh, class that we've used that model. Oh yeah, yep. And then after this, we're going to pleat it. But before we pleat, we have one more step. Okay. And um, I'll take it out to do that. So when you have your strips of chiffon, this is going to probably be, other than the bodice, this will be the hardest thing that you're going to do it's because time consuming. it is very time consuming and it will fray. So you, you're really going to be wishing you have one of these wool mats right now, I'm telling you. The way that I've done this, and I wanted to kind of give an example is to, if you are not careful with it, it's gonna fray like crazy. Mm -hmm. And that is if you are just doing it by hand and thinking, oh, okay, that's not gonna be an issue. What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna use your mat, you're gonna wanna pin it, and you're gonna want to do, do it carefully and then as you're um, uh, pulling the thread you want to hold on to the thread that you have just gone over I'm going to give a de demonstration and pull it very gently so that you're not getting all these little frayed yeah. bits mm -hmm. it's still going to be fine when we pull it yeah but it's not going to be as neat and you're going to see on your final product so this is what I mean so here I am I'm gonna get a pin. I'm gonna hold the pin down. And oops, let me go further back. And I'm going to just So basically you've done this with two rows of gathering stitches. Yeah. Almost like what you would do for a um, cartridge, um, cartridge pleat. Yeah. So you'll just grab a few. And then and you're doing hold them. it this way. Okay. If you hold it that way, it's not going to fray that bad. It's not going to do that. And and you just really need to do it on your first row. After that, it it should, it be, should be easy. easy. Mm -hmm. After your first row, you, you know you can steamroll right through it. Just you won't have to. And those are what? Uh, how, how big of stitches would you call those? <sighs> Probably an eighth. An eighth. Yeah. Okay. The other thing is you're going to want to use a beading needle on the on doing these because a, a beading needle or a clover size nine. Yeah, that's small. Because yeah, you don't want to it's break very the... thin. If you're going to use an, a between quilters needle, it's going to be too thick, and you will you'll break you'll you'll notice you're breaking the fibers. Up. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is going to be more gentle. Yeah. So we'll finish this up. All right, up. we'll finish this up and we'll be back. Okay, now that I've finished, I have my two rows. You're going to want to gently just kind of pull and ruche, make your little ruffles, and just do it all around. Now, did you just establish a center? I did. So this okay. is my center right okay. here. I'm sorry. So you got a center. I have a no, cent I'm just checking. <laughs> uh, you know, as long as you know. Yes. So this is going to be where you actually join the two pieces. That's your center. That's your center. Okay. Yeah. So they have to join it. You that have to will join be their it. Center. Okay. Yeah. And then actually had made a little bit extra on one point, but it doesn't matter. It's just I know that this is my center. And this is a lot of material to this is to, a lot to ruche. Yep. So um, we will finish this off camera, and then we'll show you how to apply it onto your overskirt. Okay. Yep. We'll be back. We'll, we'll be back after we've, we've ruched a couple of yards of stuff. <laughs> well, not a couple, but, but... It feels like it. It feels like it. Okay, so now that I've ruched and we have our ruffle completely done, you're going to pin it in place, and then we're going to go ahead and kind of baste it. You don't want to really go... We don't want any stitches on We don't on want it. any stitches on the front. You're just going to want to grab onto the chiffon. Mm -hmm. After that is done, oops, we're going to then put that over our raw edges all around. 
and this is not in the description because we we just decided to do this now. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Because that, that. we like improvising. Yes. So we'll just do So when that. you get your, your pattern in the kit, it won't say this, but that is what this is. Mm -hmm. So we are going to, that's what we're going to do. Yep. Because we have the power. <laughs> we do. So that's what we'll do next. And then after that, we'll go ahead and pleat the, the overskirt mm -hmm. and then attach, attach it. it. Okay. All right. Well, we'll, we'll be back and it, it's going to take a, a couple minutes to do this. <laughs> yes. So we'll be back. Okay. Well, I'm just about done with this. So you can see. It's looking good. Yeah, it looks very neat. It's a nice finishing to mm -hmm. that. So that will be in your kit. If you got this kit, that's what this is about. You could probably even put some pearls in there too. Well, then, then it will kind of. Might be too much. Might be too much. It might be too much, but yeah. up to But you, you could. Yeah. You could. Well, I mean, I can't believe that we're saying it might be too much. <laughs> what well, could be never enough? Okay, so here we are at the end. You just clip it. There we go. So here we are. Um, then we're going to go ahead and we're going to pleat it. So to do that, you have a middle pleat. So you're going to take it in Oops. like a middle box pleat kind of, huh? Yeah. So you're going to have the box pleat in the middle and then I think it's too, you may want to do a running stitch at the top to make it a little bit I easier. think I would do a running stitch. Yeah. Let's do that really quick. Because then you're not going to have the slippage of the, mm -hmm. of the, uh, the chiffon, the joy of chiffon. Let me do it on this one. I'm not going to anchor it in. I'm just going to run it through. And then after that, you can do a running stitch to hold your pleats together too. Yes, I think I, that's an excellent idea. Well, we'll get this done and we'll come back and show the fitting. Okay, so I have done my little box pleat. So you just do, I think it's about an inch and then you just pull it in just a tiny little bit so that you have enough so you what you want is your ruffle to match up here and the other ruffle to to match on the other side when you sew it down we're going to then turn it over and attach the this um top skirt to the hem to, to the, that hem literally that hem the hemline line. right there yeah so then i'll do that and then we're going to sew it all the way to one Side. side and then leave it the other side mm -hmm. floating it's good yeah so we're going to go and just because otherwise from this you can't side get in and out up to around here mm -hmm. and then when you do it either you're going to put like a, a hook and eye it's a snap it's a snap oh sorry i'm Oops. sorry kids i'm out of focus okay so it's going to be a snap a that's going to go mm -hmm. to here all right well we'll do that and come back and show you the next step Okay, so I've already sewn the overskirt to the bodice, um, and I've pinned this one over here because this is where your snap is going to be. Okay. So you can see it, it opens up. She can get into her dress. So the snaps you can do at the end. But in the meantime, what we're going to do next is we're going to finish up these streamers to, in the back. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to fold it up and then we're going to press it 
and then we're going to gather it together and then we'll put the pearls on. So we'll just gather both of them and then we'll come back. Okay. And so you're going to gather it up, knot it. Yes. Um, and the reason we've, we, we're doing this is because it'll give it more. Mm -hmm. You're not going to have all the, the, the um, shedding. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That'll, that'll. And then we're going to do something special, super duper to this. Okay. Now that we have it attached, the next thing we're going to do was this which is to gather the streamers and I've done a running stitch. I folded it o folded over uh, and then pressed, then did a running stitch so that it's not going to fray. You won't see the fraying. The next thing we're going to do is add the beading. So you're going to have one strand of five, one strand of six, and one strand of seven. So I've already created some beading here. So this is a strand of seven. And let me tie this up. You're going to want to do a surgeon's knot. So I'm going to do it three times. So that's not going anywhere. It's not going to go anywhere. Cut off the loose end on this. And if you are afraid, you could just put a little bit of wee hot at the top mm -hmm. to make sure. That's not a bad idea. Yeah. And then you can go ahead and sew it. So we'll go ahead and attach the other three, or the other two, because this has the three strands. And then once that is done, you're going to two then strands. add three, two strands of five, I think. Uh, three, it, three, strands. three strands of five. Yeah. yeah. Right at the center of mm -hmm. the arm. The center right here. Right. Well, we'll do that and we'll come back and show the next, the next step. Hello, Angela. How Hello. are you? I'm good. I'm so glad you're here to, to make the time out of your busy professional schedule to come up and do a little sewing. And I'm glad you've taken on the um, doing the new pink pearl fishers. I know you've done this, though, for commission work, haven't yeah. you? Yeah. So this is not going to be, there's going to be no mystery to you. No, no. For doing this. Yep. Okay. So, um, you have come up with something that I didn't know. So I guess, I guess I'm going to let you start. Okay. Well, I, but, uh, but you're not going to get away with not telling that little secret that you have. <laughs> so uh, when you get your packet, you're of course going to get your instructions. And this is the first version of the Pearl Fishers. And now you're going to get it in pink and um, this really lovely light Ecru. Ecru color. It's really pretty. We'll, we'll discuss that in a little bit. But um, again, when you are going through your instructions, please use the layout. Pattern layout. Yeah, because this is chiffon. And if you don't use this trick that I'm going to, you know, show you how to um, deal with chiffon, it'll make it really hard if you are not careful with your placement. You're going to cry, too. Yeah, you you will cry. You don't pay attention. <laughs> and and the way chiffon tends to move, you may end up getting on a bias instead of a straight line. And all of this really matters when you're... When you're working with yeah. this to get the, the drape. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you will get all your... And pieces. you have such a great idea. And, and you know, we here just have suffered. <laughs> suffered with chiffon. So but, but it's essential to this era of clothing. In the 80s, my mother and my grandmother worked together as seamstresses for boutique. And, when they, and they worked with chiffon practically exclusively. They, when I was little, they had huge bolts of it all around. And what they would use, would, they, would, they would have paper and they would have these really heavy weights to make sure that the chiffon did not move. 
So most of the time when you're cutting, you have a piece of paper, you, you have this, you have your um, pattern pinned to it, and then you would cut it. And that would just be able to kind of give the chiffon a little bit more body. Now this is my secret because this will help a lot. It will and they were, doing large, they were doing large lifetime gar life size garments yes, where weights would, would work. Yes. We're not doing that. No, we're not. That would move and, and again, you will cry. Yeah. So this is freezer paper. This is Reynolds freezer paper. You can get it at the grocery store. You could get it at a grocery store. You could get it at Walmart. You get a really big amount so it will last you. Most of the time when people use this freezer paper, it's to put it in the their printer. So like their inkjet or, or... Now why would they put it in their inkjet? Because they can print out um, a pattern on there or you oh. know, like a little picture. And okay. it's usually quilters that, that use it this way. Okay. But that you, makes sense. Yeah. So, so if you were going to wanted to put a soutache on to something, you would you would use this a soutache mm -hmm. design. Yeah. So you can see this has this dull side and it has the shiny side. The shiny side. Can you hold that up to the light yeah. so it gets? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that the okay. Yeah, we can see that shine. Mm -hmm. So I got to heat up this. Um, this is a bit wrinkly because I brought it all the way up from me. Well, we could have gone to the Grove Market across the street and gotten you some. I know, but I wanted to share this. So what you do is you're going to take your bit of chiffon. You can spray it first, make sure all the wrinkles are out before you apply it. And then you just place it on here. Then you're going to iron it. So it, when you iron it, you're not ironing it when it's damp. You're drying, no. you're drying it when it's, it's dry. dry. It okay. has to be dry. Okay. And when you iron it, make sure you know it's in the place that you want it. What I will do um, is I will take pins. Oh, I have some here. I'll take pins to kind of keep the paper down and to... And they can do their yeah. whole... Um, yes. Their do whole... Before they cut it out, they can do this. Yes. This whole bit. The whole sheet. I'm only showing you a little piece because that's right. all I have left. Right. And then I'll show you after how, how this looks. So again, you could put your whole sheet on there. You see how it's, it's nice and taut. Mm -hmm. And then, this is not fully hot yet, but oh, here we go. All you do is iron it. That's it. And that's it. Oh, that's you such see a, that? That's such a great, um, I'm going to have to tell the, the the department upstairs about this little trick because they they just do it au naturel and that is just now I the one thing we never talk about in in I don't think any of our instructors have ever talked about which is really really important in dressmaking is the grain of the fabric yes absolutely. so whatever you're doing it make sure it's the grain you you want it all going in the right direction. And the nice thing about chiffon is you can see the grain very clearly. clearly. Right. So when you put this on here, you can see it's it's going the right direction where you know where you want it. It's not going to be on the bias. It's, it's unless you want it. Unless you want it on the bias. Mm -hmm. So the next thing to do, you can cut this with scissors. Once you cut, start cutting with scissors, it will start to lift a little bit. The best way to do that, if it's on a, a very straight line, is to just use your rotary cutter, and it will be perfectly um, okay. just... Fabulous. Well, yeah. show them the pieces okay. that you've already cut out of the chiffon, because so, so it's pretty impressive as far as the, the precision of it. So this... I mean, that is just... That's just perfect to... I mean, I'm familiar with this pattern piece, so that is really, is, yep. really sure. good. That's sharp. It's very sharp. You see that? It matches perfectly because... Oh, yeah. I That's cut it. great. The other thing is... Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. you so could, you, you could draw out your pattern you pieces like first. Draw it on the back. Make sure your placement's correct, and then you can cut on the line. Oh, that's that's worth the price of admission, right there. 
So do not be afraid of chiffon. No. It's not scary. There are Michael and David go again making a chiffon dress. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well that was a great tip. Okay. So I've already cut out my chiffon pieces and I'm gonna do the brocade skirt. And again, I kind of want to give you another little tip about the brocade skirt pattern. When you get your pattern, it's going to look like this. Fold it in half and then find where you would like to have the placement at. Do you want to have a, you know, the pearls going one way or do you want it to be there a gap like here? You know, you want the pearls to be it that can be way. However they want. However you want. But, you know, again, if you fold it in half, it'll make it so much easier to then line it up the way that you want it. Yes. And I, I do appreciate how you've, I can see how you've done your, your hemline so that you're going to, you're going to do really what we did with the sample, which is the little pearl is going to drop right down mm -hmm. there into the center front. Right. Right. But I mean, there's no wrong way. There's to do no that. wrong way. It's yeah. just the way that you want it to be. Mm -hmm. But you know, again, you want it to kind of be a little bit more straight and, and you don't want to end up with, okay, you know, if you wanted things to be kind of on the line, you don't want it to be off kilter just by a little bit. And it, ma it makes a difference it when does. it's attached mm -hmm. to the bodice, that it, that it has some kind of um, symmetrical look to me. That would matter to me. I wouldn't want my, my, my points uh, to be off kilter. Okay. So that's a good job. So I'm going to cut the rest of these and... We'll be back. Okay, so we've already come here and done, added the beads to these streamers. We added the beads to the sleeves. And we also started to add the beading around the dress. And that will continue, kind of just paused for a little bit to explain this. And then it will continue up to the, the top here. And you're putting them about an inch apart? About an inch apart. Mm -hmm. Um, then after that is completed, we're going to do an, uh, the rosette that gets placed here. And you're going to have to have a strand of beads. So this is up to you how many strands you want or how long. I mean, you really want to have them just draped beautifully like yeah, this. Yes, and not all the same length. No, no. Mm -hmm. You want to vary it. Mm -hmm. uh, so to create the rosette, what I'm going to do is I folded the end piece a little bit and the same thing because you don't you want to encase it as best as you can then I'm going to do a running stitch and then just kind of gather everything into like a, a little rose little rose and then once that's complete you can put a few little beads in the in the middle and then this is actually going to be behind the rosette when it gets attached so you're gonna have your your beads then you're gonna have your rosette and you sewed all the, the beads onto a little scrap of fabric yes, so that yes. they're, they're together. Right. So yeah, you, you want to do that. Just have this little bit of silk because you're going to have leftover silk. Mm -hmm. You could use that so that... Just something for it, it to some, hold on to. Right. You want to have that, that bit of fabric for it to adhere to your little rosette. Uh, all right. So are you going to do with, the, to make the rosette, are you going to use... You're going to use a little larger stitches, aren't you? Yes, to get the fluff. large running stitches. Okay. So, I don't know. Um, a little, I don't know, maybe a little bit less than a, a quarter inch or so. In between a quarter inch and an eighth. And an eighth. So, you do want bigger stitches to make it nice and fluffy. And fluffy. Mm -hmm. You want fluffy. Uh, then there's the other thing, which... Why don't we gonna, show them that we're going to do this? This really cute. So, you're going to get in your kit... Um, some of this fur, fur that you will use for your boa, but there's we had this idea, and why not? So, so you're going to cut a piece, some pieces, an inch. like about an inch, and then you're going to sew one end, and then gather it to the other end so that they're together, and you're going to place it. But you're going to do it on that. Yes, you're going to do it on here. So you're going to place it like this, and we and have. Then, 
will have this finished look like that. Which gives it a really kind of it's interesting. It's so beautiful. It, it's much more beautiful in life than on, on It's film. very feminine. Mm -hmm. Very. I mean, this the whole ensemble is feminine, but it just gives it that extra yes. something. Yeah, it does. All right, so we'll get that done and we'll come back and show you. Okay, so now we've added the rosette, the beads, the middle, and then these hanging strands of beads. And you're almost done. Uh, we need to finish this, but there are other embellishments that you can add um, to your dress. So you have, on this example, there's beads behind here and the additional beads along the bust. I, I think it needs yeah, that. Yeah, it does. Yeah. So why don't we, tomorrow we'll, we'll, finish we'll, that. we'll finish that all up and then you're gonna go home to have a real life <laughs> with your fur babies and husband yep. and I will finish the turban. Okay. Hello, Leo. Hello. Well, since I can't uh, film and sew at the same time, you're going to loan me your magic fingers, okay? Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. The first thing we've done is we have cut out the pattern pieces, um, or the pattern pieces, oh, oh, yeah, the piece. pattern pieces, the paper pattern pieces, and we've got them all ready to go. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to open up our packet, which is a kind of a test to make sure that we're doing our job properly and make sure we have everything we need. So we should have feathers, the uh, pearled silk, tarlatan, and the chiffon. And it looks like it's, it's all good. So we're gonna take our Frixon pin and what are we gonna cut out first, Leo? That one. Yep. This one. So this we're gonna do the pearls. pearls. So we're gonna put this on the fold and we're gonna cut one. So let's see. All right, so we've got a nice piece. There should be a lot uh, left over. So we're going to put it on the fold. And then we're going to mark it with the Frixon pin. And then this way we don't have to pin the fabric. Now this has to be semi-precise, but not totally, because we're doing a very drapey thing. It's gonna be gathered and draped. So just put a couple of pins. And then we're gonna cut this out. But remember to try to cut around the pearls because they will destroy your scissors but then save them too, because you may need them later for repairs. And then we're gonna put that in our this excess in our cabbage patch, our little cabbage bowl, and those are things we might use later. Okay. okay. So do we do have a little dart we have to put in right here. So we're gonna just do a little snip of the dart and we'll we'll put that in. And yeah, just a little tiny. Mm -hmm. That's so perfect. Yeah, so that's good. All right, so the next step after that is Step going to be, pins. yeah, well, oh, we're going to cut it. No, it's for don't, don't move the, the two fabrics. Okay. The fabric. All right. And then we start to sew around here, two okay. lines. Okay, all right. So we're going to do uh, a running stitch. Uh, how, how far apart are they going to be? About it's done with quarter of the inch to the quarter, end. Quarter, to mm -hmm. okay quarter of an inch apart. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do a running stitch. And yes. we have used a double thread and it's fairly um, strong because uh, you're going to do some pulling. So we're going to 
just do these two running stitches and then we will come back and show you uh, what the next step will be. So we're back and uh, Leo's done a very nice job doing the gathering um, lines similar to what you would do if you were doing cartridge pleating and now we are going to gather this up. So you're going to take both strings and you're going to be very careful because we don't want them to break which means we would have to do it all over again and we're going to just pull it and we're going to pull it until there's nothing left to pull. So we're going to pull it and you just have to work it slowly and you're going to see it starting to take, take shape. And so is that, that's about as tight as it could be, correct? Yes. Okay, now we're going to tie it off. So we should tie it off so that that way it doesn't um, come undone. You could leave the needles on here if you want. Uh, but Leo's pretty mm -hmm. good at that. So that's going to hold it in place pretty darn well. Okay, so we'll clip that and then the next thing we're going to do, so it's been gathered and it looks kind of odd, we'll trim it. Now, we put that one. We put the gathers, fold them in half and now we're going to sew those up and we're going to go a little bit below the, um, the, li um, the stitch line and we'll sew that up and then we're going to overcast it. But we're going to sew it with a little bit of a back stitch so that it uh, holds together. So we'll get this sewed up and then we'll come back and show you the next step. We're back. Leo has sewn up the turban and now we are going to turn it. So we're going to just turn it inside and out and this will be now, looks really good. Now the next step you, you probably should do if you notice that the inside which is going to go over our form has pearls on it. And I think it's a good idea to go in there and clip those pearls off because we may need those um, if, if you lose any. And since there's a world, yeah, there's one missing right there. Mm -hmm. And with a, you know, the, the shortage of pearls right now, um, it's a good idea to conserve those. So we're going to go in and we'll clip those off and we'll come back and show you the next step. Good morning, Leo. Good morning. So I guess we're on to the um, the center part of the turban. So we have our tarlatan and our chiffon. Mm -hmm. And we have one piece of tarlatan. And one nice big piece of chiffon. Okay. okay. So should we press that first? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Press that one and then. You're going to hear background noises, people, because it's Monday morning and a lot of activity here. And we folded it in half and then we are going to press it out. And if we need to, we've got our misting bottle that we can. Okay. I think that would probably help it a good. lot. Mm -hmm. And then we put double that one. Same. 
So that is going to be what it would be facing towards her head, the or, or her forehead, the, uh, the the fold over here, right? Mm -hmm. that, yeah. So that'll that'll be here, here on her, the right? Gotcha. Mm -hmm. I made the prototype of this, and then Leo went in and perfected it. Teamwork makes dream work. And after okay. That one, we got the excess here. And then we start to sew. We're just going to overcast the mm -hmm. uh, the edges. Yeah. Oh no, you're gonna you're doing a running stitch. Oh, okay. Running stitches, uh huh. Mm -hmm. But you could uh, people you could overcast it if you want. Either way would work. All right, well, we'll get this sewn and we'll come back and show you the next step. So we're back and so you can see we've got that all um, sewn together and Leo did a nice running awesome. stitch. So in this pattern piece, you can see you fold it in half. So that's that piece and that's now done. And so now we're going to go over to the second uh, uh, pattern piece for the turban, which is the larger piece. So we're going to cut that out. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to cut one. So you do have uh, a nice bit of chiffon so that if you run short on it, you, you've got it. You can certainly make something else out of it. Okay. Now, those of you that are afraid of um, um, chiffon, you can use um, Angela's technique, but you can see that Leo cut that out perfectly without doing any special anything. Okay. So we're folding it in half, and now we're going to press it. And now we're going to put a couple pins in it just to hold it together. Okay. Pressing the centerpiece with the tarlatan. This is it. So that's the edge okay. that goes towards the towards the forehead. And then we're going to lay that on top. So we have a little a reveal. It's what, about a quarter of an oh, inch? An inch. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And then. And then we're going to make one more pleat because there's only going to be two, two of the pleats showing. And you don't have to do this exact because it's supposed to look spontaneous. Okay, that's looking good. So that's the look we're going to go for. And so we're going to 
do a overcast or a, a, a basting stitch, running mm -hmm. stitch, to hold everything in place. So we'll get this stitched up and then we'll uh, come in and uh, come back and show you the placement. We're back. Leo's got that all prepared. Now we're going to give it a little mist and we're going to do a little pressing. And then we're going to fit it to the turban. And this is going to help give the whole thing a nice structure. So that's going to go inside. Oh, before, hold on. Oh, yeah, we're going to do a little trimming. Try here. Yeah, we're going to do a little trimming. Now we lo we're losing our basting, but it's not at this point. It's not going to matter. That was just to hold it together. Voila! All right, that's looking gorgeous. So the, the excess material is going into the top of the turban to kind of fill it in. So we're going to pin it. And you can make it high or low, however you want to do it, because it would either way would be fashionable. No two turbans are alike. That looks really good. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, so now we're going to fit it to the head. This is kind of important. Now I suggest to everyone that remove the remove her wig when she's wearing the turban. And what we've done is, since most of all of the wigs have a, a nice amount of hair, maybe just clip from the underside a couple of curls, and that that can be applied to around the ears. But I think that's a good fit. What do you think? Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. Oop, that's a perfect. Oop. All right. So okay. now I start to sew here around to the turban in this part. Okay. So we're going to do some little some little mouse stitches to get this in place. We will sew that and we'll be right back to show you the next step. Okay, we're back and it looks great, Leo. Thank you. Everything is looking good. So the next step is we're going to uh, trim off the excess. Okay. So we'll get that trimmed off. You don't need that anymore. It served its purpose. You could certainly do, do this in a smaller scale, but it's, it's kind of hard to maneuver. That makes it fairly easy. Okay, so we're ready. So the next thing we're going to do is put the inner tarlatan form. Now you might have to do a little trimming to it. Uh, just to, we're going to take off look mm, about an quarter of an inch. Quarter of an inch. That's mm -hmm. good for me. And that one. But it just depends on how you make this. You might need all of it. So you can always trim, but you can't really add. And we may have to do a little a little gather around the, but maybe not, we'll see. So we're going to go in. Now we didn't take the pearls off of, for time, but you really should take those pearls off because you, you might need them. Okay. So it's in. Mm -hmm. All right. And then we check with the pool. Here we're going to make sure it fits. Nice fit, mm -hmm. tall turban, which is kind of wonderful, du directoire revival. Okay. So we've got that. There.
So this is our lining. It's a beautiful piece of silk. Normally we do a, a headdress lining in cotton, but since this is a luxurious evening gown, we're doing it in silk. Of course, it'd be much easier to sew it if it were cotton, but if it were easy, anybody could do it. On to both sides. And that's what, a, a quarter of an inch? Mm -hmm. A quarter of an inch, okay. yeah. beautifully okay. then we start to put that one around to here starting the back area okay here's the back I put the pin for don't forget what is the back the center mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. finding our center okay and then we start with the with this piece we start to put around to here, and we're gonna we're gonna catch the um, um, the uh, form as we go. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna pin this in, and then we're going to do a little blind stitch and hold it in place, and or to we'll sew it in place. Line. All right, so we'll get this this phase done, and we will be back and show you the the next step. We're back and it's looking very nice. You have um, sewn the, the, the ends together. We've trimmed excess that we don't need. And now we are going to do the final part of the constructing is we're going to gather the center and it's just going to be kind of a standard thing that you do with any hat uh, lining. So we're going to gather that with fairly small um, stitches and then we're going to gather it and then we get to do the fun part. Linings like these would have been uh, uh, taken out and removed and replaced and um, cleaned because a lot of the hair hair products would, in the time were very very messy so we're just kind of gather it up tie it off make sure it looks the way we want it to little shijin and it's ready. That looks really good. And uh, yeah, it's always a good idea to try it. So fits perfectly. Nice and tall. And if it's too tall to your taste, you can kind of do a stitch and push it, pull it down and it'll Go down, but we're we're doing that. We're going for the directoire revival, so we want that kind of dramatic. All right, we'll we'll be back to show you the the trimmings. We're back, and so we have opened up our feathers. Now I want to tell you something about feathers. No two are alike, but there is a right side and a wrong side to a feather. So you have to decide which is the right side. 
So we've, we've, we've determined that this is the right size. Mm -hmm. So these are turkey feathers. And could you hold them up, up this way for me to see? Mm -hmm. So we've got a lot of um, plushy type and then we've got a classic feather. So we've decided, or Leo's decided, we're gonna cut the top part off I'm going to use our little trusty tool that you can get at the boutique to hold it. So we're going to cut that off there. And you can cut them blunt, you can cut them at an angle. And then we're going to put them in front of the, the plushy stuff. Or do you not want to use those? Do you yeah, want to put no. those in the front? Or you're first yeah. going to sew I first, those? I first okay. sew for the right. remove before remove the... Okay, we're going, to, we're going to wrap these a bit. And we're going right through the quill. And if you don't have this tool, you should really order one because I just love it. It's like having an extra set of fingers. Now, we could, do you want to um, curl those feathers some? Some You want to? Mm -hmm. Okay. Leo's gonna curl them. So this is a technique, and you use the sharp end of your scissors, or you can use a knife, and you just start rubbing it, and you kind of turn it, and they will fluff out. Now, you're gonna lose some of it, but you've got plenty. Well, the effect we're trying to get is ostrich plumes, but to scale because ostrich plumes are much, much bigger than. Mm -hmm. And I think it, 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 you might try the sharper end. No, it's, it's curling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you just have to keep working it. There, it's looking really good. Mm -hmm. And you have to be tough with it. And if you break a feather, it's not a problem because you're going to be layering them on top and it'll hold it all together. I think that's looking good. Mm -hmm. That's what we want. All right. Now, shall we put the others on top and see what we think? So we're going to put that in the front. Here, in the front and the back. Mm -hmm. All right. Shall we get those in? Uh, and we'll wrap that around, too, with another bit. Mm -hmm. I like it. OK, OK. And let me press that one here. Right there. We're going to do another, another wrap one. around the quill. Yes, we're done. Move. I don't think you nodded it. <laughs> Yeah, here in the corner. Did you? Yeah. Oh, okay, you got it. All right. Mm And once we get it on, we can do make final adjustments. Um, oh, those are those are cur curling beautifully. And if she goes to the opera, she'll her headdress will be tickling the people next to her. Oh, that's looking really good. Why don't we curl this one a little bit too? Here, I think that needs it. Oh, you're going to trim it. Okay. 
Well, I think that's good too. Yeah. All right. So then the next thing we're going to do is we have our per we'll fit it. Oh, let's see how. Oh, before. Uh -huh. Let's see. But let's let's fit it onto the tur let's see how it looks on the turban. Uh-huh. That's going to be great. All right. Then the next step we're going to do is in between takes I have strung up these pearls and I used 30 pearls they're right here okay. and what we're going to do is we're going to wrap them around this area where we have our we're just going to wrap them around it You could even go up a little higher, I think, Leo, because you're going to have plenty. Mm -hmm. Okay, oh, let me, okay, we start to with that one, start to right here. This is, you can't make a mistake with this. However you do this, it will be no two alike and it'll come out gorgeous. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll okay. stitch we're that still... into place and we'll come mm -hmm. back with the next step. So we're back. It turned out very nice. I like the, the arrangement and the placement is wherever Leo wants to put it. It could be higher, it could be lower. That's where he wants to put it do the same however so we're going to sew it on first if you hear some sounds up they're coming from upstairs they're they're uh, they're making shoes today Yeah, we're going to use a little weeha mm -hmm. just so that it stays in the position we want. Mm -hmm. The pearls tend to move and we can kind of use it to tuck in some that need to be tucked in and keep them uniformed. And the weeha doesn't dry right away. It d dries very, very solid, but it doesn't dry right away. So you have time to maneuver it before which is very important to get it just right. So I think we're, we're, we're just about there and we have one more step. We're going to bead some pearls and we'll come back and show you the last final step. So we're back. Um, Leo went through and he repaired all of the missing beads that were missing and then if you notice he put a little um, decoration around kind of there's the V opening there upside down V and he re uh, put a nice little design uh, using the uh, scrap bead so or pearls so that it all matches so now we're looking really snazzy and the last and final touch is the swag so I found that this costume did not really look good with any kind of jewelry. It was too much. So we, we, but she needed something. So there's going to be this pearl swag that's going to be placed right about in the ear area. And it's going to come draped down the front of her face. Mm -hmm. uh, you can do it whatever length you want. We did, um, two strands at seven inches each. 
but I think that the the uh, it's a good idea to mist the pearls and then kind of manipulate them so that they don't stand up. You know, they they tend to because of the small size. And now we we've done that, and now they are, they're draped really nice. So that is going to be what you do for the turban for the pink pearl fishers. And I'm really happy with it. Are you, Leo? Yeah, that's yeah. perfect. Yeah, yeah, looks beautiful. Uh -huh. All right, friends, I hope you enjoy um, this video and enjoy making um, the pink pearl fishers. Bye-bye. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification button.